Alrighty, everybody, welcome to our third cast of the day. Uh, we have GNX versus Fjord Brower. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you, Star? Oh, I had a nice lunch. Got to watch the other match. Uh, that was entertaining. Um, <laughs> so congrats to DPS, who will be moving on. Uh, Mech Enjoyers, thank you so much for jo joining in the tournament this year. Um, and let's see. So we got everybody set up in here. We got both teams. I have a flashing icon. Ah, okay. Yeah, just then, probably the uh, announcement. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh no, no, it was uh, one of the someone was inviting me or was doing a friend invite. Oh, cool, yeah, friend invite. All right, so we are ready to go. Um, we're gonna get our map ban up here. Which let me hit that right button here. There it is. There we go. GNX versus Fjord, and we are good to get started. Yeah, so a little background, um, GNX won their last match by default. KDCM was not able to get a full team together, uh, so they went through that way, um, then lost to ABIN, and FJRD uh, lost to SRJ. Um, and let me see if they played before that. No, that was the one match that they played. So the, this match is in the loser's bracket. We'll see where it goes. One of these teams will be out, and one will be moving forward in the bracket. There you go. All right, I'll go ahead and um, told them to start their map, Ben. Um, yeah, so, yeah the, so the winner of this match uh, will move on and go up against, um, looks like, if I see the right screen there, there's uh, C CSPS. Um, or the CSPS and 228 Storm match, whoever wins that one. Yep, and uh, we actually, we have two bands in already. Wow. Um, unlike our earlier cast, this one is uh, best of three. So GNX banned Canyon and FJRD banned Torm. There we go. And we have, we have yet to see, uh, or the best of five, we did not get to see all five maps played. Um, see if we can uh, we have seen all three three maps have to have to play so far with the uh, best of three which is kind of nice so they like the ones doing the back and forth so, yes the bands are done there we go all right first map rubylite <laughs> <laughs> all right so let's see gnx picked ruby one of my favorite maps so now fjrd will pick a map and then the last one will be the decider if it goes to three, and they'll start picking sides. So FJRD picked Grim, and so mining will be drop three if Friday. we get to it. There's always a chance. Yeah, we've had a fair number, I think, go the distance, so we'll see. Yeah. All right, next, the sides. Well, let's, let's see. Let's see if we get up. Oh, there we go. We're lucky on the first one. <laughs> no swap. All right, come on. And as a reminder, we would love a swap of teams button. <laughs> yes, we would. <laughs> We're going to say that every cast we do, folks, including the finals. Going to have to bring it up. Well, All right, GNX wants two on Grim. Yep. All right, so we'll do a side swap for Grim. And then if we make it to Mining Collective, it'll stay the they same. They will stay. There nice. we go. It's only one swap, which I'm used to that with some of the earlier competitions, so that's okay. All right, let's hop over to the lobby view. Here we go. Awesome. All right, I'm going to put team one on the clock because everything looks ready. Good. And yes, folks, if you saw the earlier cast, you already know about the mouse. So I decided to leave it for this one too. Hello. Yes, this is me. And the wonderful ball cam you all get to gaze at. When we're in lobby view, so. <laughs> Do you mean trackball cam star? <laughs> there you go, a trackball cam. Yes. <laughs> so. so yeah, one of the things I'm excited about for this is the match that we're casting right after this. CSPS versus 228X is uh, gonna decide who their opponents are. So we'll know the two teams for losers bracket match 2.2 after our cast today so that'll be good oh yep I, th that is a wonderful to find out and yeah and then let's see we should also know 
Yeah, because the other match is happening right now, folks, on the other League's channel. Um, League's 2 is the uh, the Sky Ranger Jaegers versus KDCM, the Ocho. Um, and the winner from that one will be going up against DPS next week. Yeah, and DPS had a really strong win against uh, ME, I would say. Oh, yeah. Uh, um, I didn't get to catch quite all of it, but yeah, it looked really good from DPS. Yeah, the um, yeah the second I say I got part of my, part of the first one. The second match uh, became a brawl that uh, it, it it started off looking like it was going to go one direction, and then it quickly flipped. And the, again, like we saw earlier, the domino effect, where they just one right after the other. So um, I know DPS was uh, really excited um, to have won that uh, after you know, they, they did get shut down last week. Um, but no, they did some good practices this week, and I think that they were they were prepped and ready to go. I was listening to them just a little bit before the uh, before their match, so uh, they all sounded like they were really excited and to get in there and you know, to give it all they could. Yeah, I'm a little confused here. GNX, I don't know if they're deciding what they want to do, but they are well over tonnage. They're one player too many. I hope they uh, did they they're getting want, ready. <laughs> I, say, I don't do they know they're on the clock. I mean, I know you typed it. It's right there. Yeah. Then they're deciding on or they're doing Rochambeau on the eight that are going to play. <laughs> yeah, I'll just confirm. Yeah. <laughs> I have seen their tonnage has moved a little bit, so um, okay, yeah, they should yep. be good. There you go. Oh, they didn't read. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I don't know what to do about that. <laughs> the match chat area is very important, folks. Make sure you're reading it and paying attention during your matches. Now, of course, I hope they realize that they're you know, one player heavy. Um, so there they go. Okay, so there you go. They got that yeah, one out. I mean, they should be able to <laughs> sort that out. Um, they had to for CompQ, so. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody should be well capable of that at this point, I hope. Uh, looks like uh, Fjord Live has posted some in some information here. In their first major tournament, Fjord prepares to face their only historic rivals. Years of faction play showdowns have prepared both teams for this moment, but tonight. The stage has never been bigger, the lights have never been brighter, both teams are facing elimination. This is not just a faction play grudge match, but a match to determine the fate of both teams in this tournament. Prepares for some fireworks. That's kind of cool. All right. All right, yeah. there you go. <laughs> there you go, folks. <laughs> Another good stretch. Looks like GNX is all green, so just waiting nice. on them to lock. They're deciding on their lances. And I think we're going to have a quick jump for Fjord, too. They've got most of their team locked on, or greened up, ready to go. Yeah, I feel like last time we casted them, they were pretty quick to ready up. Yeah. Within like 30 I mean, seconds. All the teams have been doing a good, really good job this year, so. There's our first lock. Nice, oh nice. Goodness. And down to one. Just the team leader. I'm gonna get my. And just a reminder: this is FJRD's first time in the finals, so uh, nice to see a new team make it to the top twelve. Very much agreed. Team two right. is locked. <laughs> they took like twenty-two seconds. Boom. There you go. All right, folks. Here we go. First match: GNX versus Fjord. And right now, I'm gonna apologize if we butcher any names, because well, you know. Early human. And as soon as I'm loaded in. Yep, hopefully no issues tonight. <laughs> hopefully. Knock on wood. Righty, boom, I'm in. Score sheet up, so I've got that standing by and ready to go. And we're getting ready to drop. 
in the first match. Enjoy the beautiful scenery of Rubelite Oasis, all the browns and mustard <laughs> yellows. We'll try. We'll try to avoid the uh, the green fog too. So, all right, I'm in James Bond. James is Mac. I'm say James Bond. James is Mac. He's in a piranha with a bunch of machine guns, heavy small lasers. Sailor Jerry in a fire starter ember with medium pulse lasers and machine guns. Uh, Simple Yukio in the Viper with machine guns and small pulse. Dr. Guppy in the Black Lantern with light machine guns, ear medium lasers. And Rubber Deckies in the Warhammer Black Widow, small lasers, LB20s. And Buster with the Mauler with uh, UAC2s. And then Franken, uh, Franken, we'll call him Franken, Frank. Sun Spider with the UAC 2s, and then last but not least, Huey the Great and Annihilator 1A with AC 5s and light PBCs. All right, and over on the other side, we've got Pirate Queen Beckett in a 8 Heavy MG 4 ER Micro Mislinks. We've got, if I can select him, a Terror of Death and a Firestarter 9A with 8 SPLs. Uh, let me see. Uh, Snack in a Kodiak 3 with four AC-10s, four ER micros. Iron Wolf Pack in a Bolt with four AC-5s. Marquee in a Flea 17. Uh, one small, six SPLs. Uh, abdomen Shoes in a Night Gear with one ER Peep and three AC-10s. Player Unknown in an MX-90, two AC-2s, four AC-5s. And then Chicken Man in a Black Widow, four AC-5, two light PPC. We've already got a little bit of shooting uh, across the center. Yeah, we've had a, uh, see, we had a strike in the middle, Theta. Uh, Ghost, uh, GNX was able to capture Theta, FC yeah, and nice Gamma. So. In the early three cap, for sure. And uh, a couple players on FGRD have taken a little damage. Uh, they haven't managed to hit GNX from what I can see, but you know, nothing too substantial, I don't think. No, just a little bit of paint scratcher so far. And it looks like uh, GNX is moving uh, on the Epsi side, fairly spread out. Looks like they want to take that high ground near Epsi. But uh, Buster can't really peek that from the looks of it. He's decided going up over that crest. Oh, he's going for it oh, again. There you go. Yep. <laughs> and Buster and shooting up abdomen shoes, getting some good hits in. Yeah, he's the first one to take damage on their side, dropping down to 99%. <laughs> His damage on abdomen was pretty spread, but you know, yeah. it's a start. <laughs> and uh, FGRD trying to make a play for Theta. Marquis gets away relatively free. And he gets the cap, which is important. Got a couple of GNX near Theta. Am I try to they're gonna try to retake it? Simple Yukio's in there now. Trying to dodge the shots. You know, I think GNX was expecting a rush strat here, just based on the builds and where they're set up. So they might be trying to figure out what they want to do at this point since FJRD is sitting back for the most part. There you go, GNX gets the retake Theta there. Player Unknown taking a fair bit of damage uh, on the FJRD side. I think they're just being outranged at this point. I mean, he's got two AC2s and then the four AC5s. I don't think he's doing close to full damage with those AC5s. So I think, to some extent, FJRD just don't have the right builds for what they're setting up to do right now. I think they do have to close, even if it's not, you know, full-on rush. And with GNX holding the three cap, that's going to pressure them. They're going to have to do something at some point. Oh, Franken taking some shots here. Chicken Man has moved up a bit further and is dropping down. So it does seem like the call has come on the FJRD side to move up a little bit more, at least. You know, I would have thought they might have wanted to move through that low ground under the platform, but it looks and... like they might be setting up to shoot over this ridge that overlooks Theta, which I do think should put them in range. So. Yeah, that's, that could, could be, be okay. painful. Like, yeah, it might be painful. Well, it's going to expose them, though. It might, might yeah, be I mean, painful. It's pretty, it's <laughs> there's, there's not, there's <laughs> not very many places you can go there once you're there, and you're going to see it. You're, they're going to get all bunched up. 
Oh, Terror of Death might be in trouble here because Dr. Guppy sees him. He doesn't see Guppy. But uh, the shot on him, not too bad, I don't think. Oh, actually, one of his legs is open, so he's going to have to be careful. Guppy's going to take another shot on him. Doesn't get the leg, though. Uh, and there's oh. kind of a scrum over Theta. Yep. Snack oh, ran in, Iron Wolf Pack ran in, Chicken Man just firing from the back. Both Snack and Chicken or Iron are down. So GNX have a numbers advantage now, even if uh, Franken is almost dead. They also take down Player okay. Unknown. It's looking really good for GNX. They get uh, Terror of Death down, so yep. it's now a 4v8 yep. in favor of GNX. Yeah, Marquee. Chicken Man is going to go down real soon. Uh, Frank goes down. He was he yep. was pretty useless at that yep. point anyway. But... Marquis got legged and is now dropped. Chicken Man down, so only two, two left for F8. FJRD. Yeah, this... Abdomen getting shot in the back. I mean, this is just going to go to GNX for yeah. sure. <laughs> Beckett trying to stay alive, trying to evade a little bit, get some damage in, but they just it's drop just right out. <laughs> yeah, James just drops right down there with him. Here comes Sailor he's, Jerry. <laughs> he's only got two uh, micros now, which is not a lot of firepower, to say the least. And did he just get legged? Yeah, yeah, he's done. Yeah. Well played from GNX. And yeah, I just think FJRD, they just didn't take the builds, I think, for that kind of long range fight. You know, they, they had a lot of AC5s, which would have been better closer up, I think. Um, and on the damage, we see Buster Machine did 953 for GNX, so doing quite a bit of work for them. Huey doing really well as well, 541, 411 from Franken. Uh, so those three really uh, pulling some weight. Guppy, 393, uh, and just not as much damage on the... Um, FJRD side. And very little team damage. Looking at that port or that portion of it. Uh, you can tell them we do a side swap here. Hold on. Click, click, click. Alrighty. Well, those numbers are up there. Give me a second. We'll go into the side swap while you guys have that view. You can continue seeing the numbers that were put out by both teams. Uh, swipe swap complete, switching over to Grim. And that's done. Should be good. Back to your lobby view. All right, just putting team one on the clock. So, yeah, I don't know that there's that much else to say about that match. Um, I, I guess I would agree with what you were saying earlier that, you know, the position FJRD did eventually take was quite exposed. Um, and I also think they were just pretty shot up at that point. Um, yeah, well, that, that, that whole spot is really, you get into such a choke point right there, unless you like immediately just go and don't stop. But as soon as the first couple people in the front get hit, they slow down and then it just becomes a traffic jam. Yeah. And, and a lot of their mechs took, you know, 10, 20% damage before they even started to make that move. Um, yeah. So that's unfortunate for them. For Grim, this is another map that has really long sight lines. We did see DPS very effectively brawl rush on this map earlier. So we'll see if one of these teams chooses to do that and can replicate DPS's success. And... Um, if not, you know, I would expect quite a bit of long range trading, although you could do like uh, aggressive laser vomit or something as a kind of midway point between those two. Right, right, right. Well, do we want to pull up the map strat while the teams are putting their stuff together? Sure. Right button here, which is over here and there and then boom, map strat. There it is. All right. So, um, you know, very common to send at least one mech to 
Gamma from Team One, and that mech may go on. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow! <laughs> Give me that a was, minute. <laughs> wow, that was qu quick. <laughs> One on the clock. Yep. Team so one I don't know if you want to say something about the map while I do this. <laughs> yeah. Well, earlier, like what we saw with uh, yeah. it was earlier, you know, they were got into the big brawl um, around Theta. Well, Theta's Theta is where I like where I see a lot of brawls happen. It's a big open area. It's yeah, yeah. it is dangerous to be there. Um, I don't remember the the full path that DPS took. <laughs> That's what but I'm trying to recall. <laughs> it was something like something like this. They came in from Fox Seven, Fox Eight, because uh, Team Two will very frequently set up on Hamburger Hill over here, um, and we have seen the GNX like to play uh, long range a fair bit. So we might see them do that. You know, try and set up there, and if FJRD want to brawl them, they might push from that Fox Seven, Fox Eight area. Or even if they just want to bring mid range, you know, they might still go to similar positions, although also maybe put in something in like Gulf 7 potentially. Um, and very frequently there will be a fight between possibly somebody from Charlie from uh, Team 1 and a mech or more from uh, Alpha. And Kappa uh, is very frequently an area where. A team will go for a gank so there might be you know somebody trying to catch somebody by surprise over there uh, so really important to be very aware of what's going on if you're heading in that direction because it's so isolated yeah we've we typically we sent lights to kappa just to get it and get back on have to, unless you see somebody if they actually see someone there then they'll still say hey cut or cut early head over and come help us instead um yeah, you want a fast yeah. light too. You're not gonna send like an Irby over there because <laughs> you know it's just gonna get run down. <laughs> yeah, like way too quick. Uh... Yeah, and, and for team two, you know, probably somebody to Sigma. They may then go see if they can get Epsi um, and mix in Bravo or Alpha. You know, may go to Hamburger Hill. Um, you can also send somebody to Theta from either side. It's very open. It's very risky, but if you send like a flea, you might be able to either get some damage in on the enemy capper or sliver cap it, and then it can be pretty safe because it's so exposed. You know, it's easier to deny than some caps. So yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Red Live says Ruby, not our map. On to game two. Well, let's go switch. Yeah, I mean, it happens. It happens. <laughs> oh yeah. All right, we're gonna move on to game. Yeah. So yes, we're on game two, and team two is all, all green. We're just waiting for the lock call. It should be any moment. Yeah, probably just discussing final details. And FJRD are Alpha Bravo, so there's a good chance they're not sending anything towards Kappa. Yeah. yeah. Uh, whereas GNX is split across the three with four in alpha that could be their wolf pack or maybe it's a couple of their traders and maybe one light um bravo uh quite likely some traders i would think and maybe a mech to go contest or deny theta uh and then you know james is probably going to go grab sigma and then see if he can get epsi, epsi. Um, he often plays a flea so that's a good mech for that role very true, very true. If that's what he's in, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out soon enough. Uh, Simple Yukio was ready, I'm ready. And up, Simple Yukio's okay. ready. Here we go. There we go. Second drop of the night. Grim Plexus. All righty, let's see. Sorry about yeah, that. Just when... waiting, waiting for these dropships <laughs> to come in. <laughs> Don't want to mess with anything. Right. I apologize. We have a drum set down here, and one of the boys happened to step or walk by it and accidentally ran into a piece of it. So. <laughs> oh, that civil, wasn't little... the drop start music? <laughs> a little civil crash for you. All right, here we go. I'm hopping into Sean Bomb's mech. Let's see what he's got going on here. Oh, I, I forgot to switch. 
Aha, I switched that real quick. There we go. All right, now I'll read it. He's on the linebacker with small pulse lasers and SRM sixes. Player unknown in the summoner with SRM sixes. The Revan and Black Ladder with ER micros and small pulse. Chicken Man and the Crusader 6T. Hey, there you go, small pulse lasers. Terra, ter Terror of Death and the Firestar with small pulse lasers. Snack and the Viper F with heavy machine guns and micro pulse. Marquee and the Storm Crow with a streak SRM sixes. Iron Wolf and the Executioner with small pulse and micro pulse. And a couple large pulse. What do we got over right. there? Uh, we've got Dr. Guppy in the Black Lantern A with five ER Meads, four light machine guns, James in his SPL small laser uh, flea, Huey the Great in a four ER Mead, four LPL Marauder 2C, um, 8008 in the Blood SB with six ER large, uh, rubber duckies in a Charger 1A1, seven small lasers, Buster in a six ER Mead, two LPL Timber Prime, simple Yukio in a Viper with if i can get it apparently i can't okay uh sailor jerry in the five small laser three light ppc fire starter 9a and then simple yukio in an 8 mg 5 spl viper it looks like james has to bail out from epsi after taking it because fjrd are on top of it yep he got over there pretty quick though and it's enough to get four cap up just briefly but they're still holding three Theta being Sliver, to Kappa, and then also Sigma. Yep, and I suspect, and we've seen them do this before, I suspect FJRD are trying to identify something to push. Uh, I think the last match we cast of them, I forget who they were playing, unfortunately, but both teams kind of formed up in front of Epsi and charged into each other. Um, so they're going to have to scout out where GNX is and then decide how they want to path over there. But GNX is pretty spread, which makes that... On the one hand, risky, because you don't catch the whole team and just wipe them out. And on the other hand, you might be able to catch them in like an 8v4 or something like that, if you uh, time it right. Yeah, if you're at all, mostly all sitting right here by Epsi, but yeah, you can see everybody else all spread all over the place. Uh, it looks like they're deciding they're taking, I think, a similar path to DPS. At least they're moving in the same direction as DPS did uh, earlier tonight in that other match. Uh, GNX know at least the Black Laner is there, um, but based on, yeah, th I, they have to know that the whole FJRD team like or everybody is there. <laughs> I mean, they've seen two mechs, but like they haven't seen anything anywhere else. So, and I think they are close enough to each other that they're going to be able to support uh, rubber duckies probably wants to get more in the path of this push since he's got the small lasers uh, and off they go FJRD are charging I'll say Sean one, two, three, go. is taking the most damage so far in the linebacker one leg open going to be legged oh and he's legged so he's not going to make it in yeah that was a focus on that one simply Yukio shooting from the side as well and he got legged so that Viper is stuck there now, basically. He'll probably be the first to go. John Bomb John Bomb goes down. And they've actually just run by uh, Yukio, but uh, Huey goes down for GNX, so it's 7-7. Seven, seven. Uh, player unknown, I think, just lost something. He's... Simple Yukio Listen. goes down, so advantage FJRD in numbers so far. Uh, but Iron Wolf Pack got legged. So he's going to have trouble shooting more than just those two LPLs. Uh, the Revan just got legged. So I think GNX are doing a really good job kind of stretching this push out. Leg and mechs, player unknown is legged. I think GNX are going to take this one just based on how long and how spread out this push has become. Because a lot of GNX at this point, they can just kind of run away. And they have the three cap. Snack goes down. Yeah, and Chicken Man is almost legged. I would say he's one of the most dangerous. Yep, he's legged. Nope. So really, they just have to deal with the fire starter, and then GNX will have a pretty confident uh, win here, I think. Which 8008 is working on that right now. Yeah, yep, yep. fire starter's legged. legged. So, I mean, that should be it, just based on caps and everything. GNX could just run away at this point. 
Oh, there you but, go. You know, they can just finish, just finish them off. <laughs> There's no need. So good, good push receive from GNX there. Good drops, everybody. Good job. Uh, that'll be it for FJRD in the tournament, unfortunately, for them. All right, let me get these stats posted up here for y'all. Attempt two. Yeah, pretty good damage spread from GNX. A lot of players in the four to 500 range. Two kills from Dr. Guppy, 8,008, and Rubber Duckies, one each from Simple Yukio and Buster Machine. Um, and then for FJRD, you know, nobody broke 400. A um, couple kills from Iron Wolf Pack in that XE, one from Player Unknown, and uh, Marquis led the team in damage with 381. Well, I don't know if the other team is going to be ready to play. It's currently 20 minutes early. Uh, CSPS versus 228 is scheduled for uh, 1850 Pacific. Yeah, about 20 minutes from now. Yeah. So, um, can we, uh, do you know if the other match is currently going on still? I do not. Hey. Uh, let me see. So we can definitely go raid them if that match is still happening. Um, otherwise, we can... Uh... Yeah, it looks like it's still on stream. All right. I don't know what the state of it is, but yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, well, they might be done by the time we get there. <laughs> Let's see. We can pull up the channel. Of course, we don't know where, don't know where they are in the match either. So uh, It's like one drop one drop to zero, so this could be the end of theirs too, depending on what, uh, what happens with KDCM, so... All right, well, I guess we can go and end for now, and then we'll restart back up here in about 15 minutes, well, 20 minutes, and uh, do our final cast of the night. Sounds good. So, right. We'll see you all then. All right, folks, see you then. again soon.